Blue, do you have pool over there as well? Alright, I do need him over at Fossil Flats for a quick minute. What is that? Head. Don't say Bert, I already know that. Don't say dinosaur bone, because we already know that too. That's a collection of minerals. <laughs> <laughs> you understand I'm right at your kneecap? <laughs> yeah, I know. Could Hello. that be a server? Wide end here, Could be short end down there. Opens knife. Is that a caudal? Oh, well. Yeah, it's a very small one. That's small. Small. All right. Can I get where you are? Yeah. Badly deformed scapula? Nope. What the hell is that? A pubis. Mm-hmm. She might actually have, have us on that one. Yeah, because there's no concavity there. So. Right. Nice. So there's no deformation in that at all. That's what the, that's well. There's a little. There's a little bit there's a little in the bit. blade. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but not too much. You know, once it goes back together again, you'll lose some of that bowing, but not too much. Yeah. No, it's good. No, it's good. It's just not what I wanted. <laughs> it's great. Oh. It's, it's great. It's just not what I was what I deep down inside wanted to see. What if we had two All right, here? Barry. Would that be something you want? What is my favorite thing about paleontology? I think it's the hunt. I, I like, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's a lot like forensics, where you come in after something occurs and you try and figure out what happened. And in most cases, you don't have 100% of the puzzle pieces there. So you've really got to apply a lot of scientific techniques. You've got to apply problem solving in order to f come up with a cohesive picture for everything that occurred at a spot. I've tried many times to use logic out here where you say, okay, well, if I see legs over here, then this part of the body should be here and this part of the body should be there. And it doesn't work that way. After 148 million years, it doesn't work that way. So it's constantly, it's, it's coming up with a solution and it's kind of the fun of having that solution be wrong. And then you have to go back and you come up with a new solution. And I like that. I, I like dealing with that. I like sitting down on a patch of ground where there's nothing there and start finding the things that I think might be there and then figuring out what they are and then how the big picture of not only how this thing died, but how this thing lived and how it got to where it is. That to me is the most fun. It, it's just the it's the investigation side of it, so to speak, that I really enjoy doing. We don't want plaster on this. Um, so normally we would just throw a tarp over it and weigh it down with rocks, but it mm. is so close in here that I'm just gonna wrap it with foil mm. on this the end. The entire thing or just like? Just this end of it that's mm -hmm. like really in the splash zone and then we'll put the tarp on the rest of it. Mm -hmm. I like riding with science to make this earth. <laughs> <laughs> It's just an appropriate exclusion. Yeah. That was like just enough space. <laughs> um, we did not put enough plaster in our plaster mix. Um, and I think I, yeah, messed up a little bit. It should be a lot harder than this at this point in the jacketing process. And it's not the end of the world. It just means we have to sit here for a little bit and wait. I know it's Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My favorite thing about paleontology is the fact that you are the first person, you are the first living thing to touch these creatures in millions of years. It's a magical moment where you find that piece of bone or you find a piece of a shell or a skin imprint or a trackway or something like that. And it just hits you that this is the first time someone has laid eyes on this thing in millions of years, in that entire span of time. And this thing, it's like it's just been waiting for you to find it. 
and it, it gives me chills every time and I, I live for that feeling. 44 centimeters. Huh? Plus or minus about a millimeter. The worst thing you want to do as a paleontologist is destroy a bone. So uh, I don't really like doing this at all. But if there's nothing you can do with it, the only thing you can do is get the data before you destroy it. So at least we have that now. Oh God, it kept going. Oh, it's way longer. I also love, especially with elevation science, we get this sort of citizen science education aspect of our work. And it is really exciting to get to see a little kid find a dinosaur bone for the first time um, and get to work with people who are like living a lifelong the dream coming out here. <laughs> My favorite part about paleontology, it's hard to choose just one, um, but how can you beat coming to these beautiful rugged places and um, and seeing new things no one's ever seen before and making new discoveries every day and teaching the science to all these interested people and meeting all these interesting people. Um, I just, man, it's just a beautiful place and I get to spend my summers here. So what's not to love about it? The following is a weather alert for the following counties in Montana, Bighorn, Musselshaw, Rosebud, Treasure, and Yellowstone. The National Weather Service in Billings has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Western Bighorn County in South Central Montana, Musselshaw County in Central Montana. They look a bit different today. Yeah. 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 Ooh, water farts. Love it. Ew. So last night we had a pretty severe thunderstorm roll across the basin. Um, it rolled down from the Beartooths and just dumped a ton of rain on the Mother's Day site. Um, so much so that we had an area, we call it Pool's Corner, now it's Pool's Pool, uh, because it was just full of water. And so we were fortunate enough that one of the locations within the quarry already had a drainage trench, um, but we had to dig one this morning in order to kind of help drain out that corner that Pool has been working in. And um, now we have to let everything dry basically. One area of the quarry is just um, unusable, at least for, for a couple days. <laughs> My favorite thing about paleontology is the fact that it can give us a picture into worlds that we don't even know. It's an interesting mix of both the geology and the biology that can help us paint a picture of a world that is incredibly diverse and incredibly different uh, than the one in which we live today. Through all of the work that we've done so far, we have shown the changes in dinosaurs from little, little guys during the Triassic to huge sauropods during the Jurassic that were over 150 foot long, um, and then even later to the big tyrannosaurs that dominated the Cretaceous. Paleontology, it gives us a view into past worlds. And I think for me, that's the part that excites me the most. Um, I like to, to be able to tell a story. Um, and paleontology gives us the ability to tell the stories from the past, from Earth's history, deep time, um, that otherwise we would have never known.